All right, man, I got to get mad. Shout outs first to my girl, Brittany. Man, I know how I can get some time. Look, at, I want you to know for real, I love you. I believe in you. Hey, and what you're going through, you are going to get through it. All right, keep your head up. You remember what I told you last week? The ground ain't no place for a champion. Said it best by Muhammad Ali himself, that the ground ain't nowhere for a champion. So I just want to encourage you, girl, keep your head up, all right? You are going to get through this. I believe in you, I trust in you, and I know you're going to fight your way through this thing, all right? So I got three points for y'all today, three points. But before I hit you with those three points, man, I got to just tell y'all, Man, what a great feeling it was. I woke up Monday morning, right? I was in LA. I was in, uh, my bad, Oakland, California. I got back, man, five hours there, five hours back. West Coast ain't no joke with the flight, right? Your boy fell out. Woke up Monday morning. My boy called me like, ET, you ain't gonna believe it. I said, what? He said, UAB made it, baby. They was the last team to make it to the tournament. All right. And so your boy ET, man, when I found out I called my boy Mike Davis coach Mike Davis I drove down to the game let me tell y'all something y'all gotta hear what I'm saying I drove down to the game why because they were the last team to make it in we had talked about miracle territory and I just wanted to be there to support them because everything I read man folks was just they was on them like you know hey they, they ain't this they ain't that they shouldn't have made it other teams should have made it and you know your boy ET baby I'm all about the underdog that's what I live for baby that's why I get on every Monday because I'm trying to encourage the underdog listen to me if you the number one seed baby if you got it going on then you got enough support so your boy ET drove down why did I drive down I wanted to be in their presence I hit the dinner I was with the team at dinner in the locker room I was in the locker room with the squad I was right there with the boys doing the game right trying to support them why because ET knows first hand Listen to me out there, baby. If you feel like an underdog, ET knows what it's like sitting in that classroom while the teacher is talking to the, you know, that student uh, most likely to achieve. You know that student? My man who everybody's saying going to blow up. I'm talking about from 10, from 12, from 14. That young lady, everybody is saying they're going to blow up that the world is yours, right? And you got to sit in the classroom and you got to hear the teacher talk to them about how they're going to blow up, how they're going to make it, how they're going to do it, right? And the teacher act like you don't exist, like you're not even there, they're talking about you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be an engineer, and the teacher go right past you, so that's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to those out there today that you ain't got that kind of support. You're the first one in your family to go to college. You're the first generation, baby. Ain't nobody sending you care packages. Ain't nobody cashing you out on a monthly basis. When you look around, ain't nobody sending you checks, baby. You ain't got, you know, folks calling you, pumping you up, motivating you, inspiring you, all right? So, E.T., I know what it's like to feel abandoned. I know what it's like to feel left alone. I know what it feels like when somebody feel like you the one, you know, you the reason why stuff is messed up in the first place. And so, this is for my underdog. So, I went to UAB to watch the team, baby. I didn't care if they made it past round one, if they got it past round two, if they made it to the Sweet 16. I just wanted to be there physically to support and let fellas know that when you are underdog, baby, if you're an underdog and you put forth 120%, just like the folks told them, the world is yours, the world can be yours. So it's your boy E.T. Before I give you these principles, I got to give mad ups to my underdogs out there. You in college, baby, doing it. You trying to make your dreams become a reality. You an entrepreneur, baby. Hang in there. Stick in there. Don't give up. You say, E.T., why are you so pumped up, baby? Why are you telling me you believe in me? I'm telling you because if you don't have no other encouragement, you look at your boy, right? If you don't have no other encouragement, you look at me, baby. I was the underdog. I went from the bottom, I told you, to the top. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's all I want you to know. That's You don't have to know about every accomplishment, everything I've ever uh, tried to accomplish and do. But I want you to know that your boy E.T., I was that kid in class that nobody believed in. I was that kid when I got to college that nobody was saying I was the most likely to succeed, all right? I was that kid that nobody came to and said, you're going to blow up. You're going to do big things. I didn't have that motivation. I didn't have that inspiration. I didn't have nobody telling me that, right? But I believed in my 
my heart that just because I wasn't in the picture, the one who was most likely to succeed, that I had a chance just like everybody else had a chance. And so I'm telling you, if you're in the game, you can win, baby. As long as you're in the game, and if you woke up today, if you're alive today, if you're breathing today, you might not be doing as well as you want to do in school, but if you're in there, you could do it. You may not be the, you know, the number one person in terms of sales in your company, but if you believe you can do it and you're in the game, baby, you could do it. So I was just pumped up to be that's right with the last seed with my main man, Coach Mike Davis, all right? And it wasn't until I got to college. Listen to me, that's why I'm pumping you up. That's why I'm telling you I believe in you. That's why I'm telling you you can do it. That's, that's why I'm telling you you can make it because it really wasn't until I got to Michigan State and I took Dr. Dak Bovey's class and Dr. Dak Bovey would look at me man to man and tell me, baby, you can make this thing happen. Dr. Chris Dunbar would look at me and say, you can not only get your master's, but you can get your PhD. Rodney, Murray Edwards, these brothers looked at me in my eyes and told me you could do it. So I'm looking at you in your eye, I'm looking at you in your face, and I'm telling you, if you're watching me right now, whatever you put your heart to do, whatever you put your mind to do, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, I don't care if you don't have no support. With me, you, alone, we can get this thing done, baby, all right? So this one is dedicated to all of my underdogs out there. You can do it, baby, but you got to want it for you more than E.T. wanted for you. I'm just here to be your cheerleader. I'm just here to pump you up. I'm just here to motivate you, but you got to put in the work. All right, so I got three things for you, baby. Three things real quick, all right? The first one is this, baby. This is to all my underdogs out there. Special addition to my underdogs. If you're an underdog out there, that means you don't have the resources that other people have. That means that you don't have the support that other people have, all right? I need you to do me one big favor. The first thing I need you to do for me, baby, is I need you to coach. I got you. Is take the fight to them. You better hear what I'm telling you. If you ain't got what everybody else got, if you the shortest dude on the team, right? If you ain't got all the height, if you ain't got all the speed, one of the things that you're going to have to do if you want to make your dream a reality, you got to take the fight to them. You can't wait for it to come. You got to go take the fight to them. i never forget when I was a little shorty, man. We moved on the west side of Detroit, 8 Mile Trojan, baby, 8 Mile in Braille. My mom had bought me this big wheel. Old dude got me the big wheel, baby. The green machine. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. The green machine, baby, where you know it had both gears on both sides. I'll never forget it was some kids in the neighborhood who parents couldn't afford it, right? Two brothers. And so they stripped me, man. They stole my big wheel from me, man. Took my big wheel. I went home in tears. I'm crying. I'm going through it. I walked through the door. My mom like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? I'm like, mom, they stole my big wheel. Can you go get my green machine for me? And my mother taught me the lesson that day. My mother said to me, if you don't go back outside and get your big wheel, don't come back in this house until you go get your big wheel. And I don't care how big they are. I don't care how strong they are. You do whatever you got to do. But when you get back to this house, you break, you make sure you got that big wheel when you come back. I went outside, bruh. I went outside. I looked at how big my man was. I looked at his brother, right? I looked to the side. I saw a bottle and I ain't advocating fighting. I'm just telling you, I took the fight to him. I went and got that bottle. I broke that bottle. I ran up to my man and I told my man, you better give me my, you better give me my big wheel back. And I'm telling you, it was a great feeling that day and it was a life lesson. When I rode, that's right, I rode my green machine home and every time I rode it, I remember that story and I'm telling you, out there right now. Yeah, you might not be the smartest student. Yep, you might not write the best. Nope, you might not be that deep in math. Your critical thinking skills might not be on the next level, but I, ch I challenge you right now. I, ch I dare you. I double dare you. You know how I do it. Take the fight to them. Stop running. Stop crying. Stop whining. Stop giving up. And you go take the fight to them. You hear what I said? Go take the fight to them. That's my first principle. If you don't get nothing else, I'm telling you. If you learn, if you learn to take the fight to them, I'm telling you, you're going to be on a whole nother level. Now, nah, you got to check this out, all right? All right, listen to me very closely. Number two, number two, number two, you got to, em you got to embrace. Make sure you catch this, baby. You got to embrace the trials. You got to embrace the tribulations. When I read, when I read, when I read, the st when you send me this stuff, I, a lot of y'all, you know, you're talking about trials and tribulations, and I'm not mad. 
we all go through them, but I need you to talk about them differently, all right? You got to come to ET a little different. I need you when you're dealing with your trials and tribulations, I need you to embrace the trials. Now, I told you, I laugh, right? I laugh because you got folks out there that's sending me emails, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm using that stuff as motivation. They watching me four years ago, ET, the secret to success. How you going to preach about say you big, you fat, right? And so what I do is I take, I take that as motivation every time I'm running this morning when I was putting in my six, seven miles, you know, and I felt like giving up. All I could just keep thinking about was those individuals who like, yo, how you going to preach it if you ain't living it, right? They watched something four years ago, don't even know you boy and lost weight, but I'm running. Every time I run, I think about them. Every time I think about giving up, every time I think about quit, I think about those individuals. So what I do is I don't talk about my trials as if they negative. I embrace them. All right. You see the weight. Y'all don't know this, but your boy lost weight. You know how the weight life st the weight loss started. I'm going to tell y'all the secret because I don't know if I've ever shared this. I was babysitting a little fella from the church, two year old fella. My man, I don't know what was going on with my man, but he was sick. I told the mother, bring him over anyway. It's all good. I brought my man over, man. Let me tell you something. I didn't know little man was sick. I ended up getting sick, getting a stomach virus for about 30 hours. Your boy couldn't eat. I was going through it pain. I felt like I was about to die, right? But I just knew 24 hours I could get through it. 30 hours later, your boy E.T. got his strength back. I got my health back, but I noticed I had lost a little weight. I got on the scale. I had lost like five pounds because of that little situation. And once I lost five, I was like, yo, E, you done already lost five, baby. You smaller than what you were before the trial. Before, catch what I'm trying to tell you. It was the trial. It was the tribulation that was the spark for my weight loss. I didn't get up one morning and just start jogging. I didn't get up one morning and just start eating. What happened was there was a trial that came in my life, all right, that switched up the whole game. And I'm telling you, some of you want comfort. Some of you stuck in the zone. Some of you love ease. And I'm telling you, it's your trial. It's your tribulation that's going to get you out your comfort zone. It's your trial. It's your tribulation that's going to take you to the next level. So stop whining. Stop complaining. All right. And what I need you to do is to embrace it. Now, let me say this because I don't, I don't want to get a wrong message. I don't want to give out the wrong message. Listen to me very closely. Listen to me very closely. It is no shame in wanting to quit. All right? No shame in wanting to quit. Let me just real quick, let me be honest with you. Let me be transparent with you. All right? I'm on my way to Oakland. I'm studying the whole way. I'm hurt. I'm like, E, you, you doing it, man. You finally all over the road doing your thing. I'm calling folks. Some of you out there, you're calling me. You're texting me. You're emailing me. Right? We're going back and forth, Facebook, whatever. And here I am. I need time. I'm, I'm on the plane. Carl, I'm on the plane. It's people watching movies. I'm doing schoolwork. They're watching movies. There's people on the phone. I'm reading, studying, doing papers. I'm thinking, why am I still in school? I can't stand the deadlines. I can't stand writing all these papers, right? And I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I'm driving. I'm on my way to. I'm on my way to see my boys at UAB to support my boys while they in the locker room getting ready. Your boys across the street at the Marriott because I got an online class and I gotta hurry up and finish my class so I can get over to the game. I'm saying this stuff. This School stuff is killing me like it's cramping my style and I just for a second y'all can I just be transparent I was like I can't stand school right now I got one more stats class to go to be finished with my coursework for the PhD and I'm telling y'all I was like I'm ready to quit I'm ready to give up and I just stopped for a minute I called out to the I called out to my maker and said I just can't take this no more I want to quit and then for one second, as I was thinking about quitting, I was thinking about all those young people who I told you could do it. All those young people that I motivated and told them that a setback is a setup for a comeback. All those young people who I motivated and told them the only place where success comes before work is in a dictionary. Everybody I ever told you can make your dreams be ha become a reality. You can make it happen. Everybody, for that second, I thought about everybody I ever told was you put your mind to it and ain't nothing you can't do. Everybody that I told, if you believe it, you can, if you can conceive it, then you can achieve it. And for that moment, I thought about it and was like, E, if you give up, you're going to be faking the funk. And so I took a, a breather for a quick 60 seconds and I, 
exhale. And then I said, let's go for it, boy. So listen to me. It ain't no shame in thinking about quitting. It ain't no shame. It ain't no shame in getting tired. It's no shame in feeling burnt out. It's no shame. But the trick is, don't just Think about it. Say to yourself, I got to rethink it and get this thought out of my mind. Why? Because the shame is in quitting. So if you thought about it, there ain't nothing wrong with that boo. But whatever you do, don't let that thought, don't let that thought become a reality. All right. Here goes my last one for you. My last one. And you've heard me say it before. You say, E.T., you still on that? I will be on this last one as long as I live. If you are an underdog, you got to believe against all odds. If you are an underdog, you got to learn to close your ears to everybody. You got to learn to close your ears to everything. You got to learn to block out the distractions and you got to learn to get focused. All right. First quarter living, baby. This is it for us. We about to go in the second quarter living. And first quarter living, here's the big idea. First quarter living is about casting the vision. It ain't about hitting it out the park right now. This first quarter living is just about having a vision. It's just about having a central focus. It's just about establishing a, 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 a vision, a, establishing a dream, establishing a goal. Some of y'all, y'all off into the second quarter living, third quarter, fourth. No, 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 no. No, you got to find your pace. When I first started exercising, I couldn't hardly run 15 minutes on the treadmill. Now I can do over an hour. I couldn't run over a mile or two miles. But watch this. After the first one, after the second one, my goal, I told you, was just to run. My goal wasn't so many miles. Now I'm up to like seven miles. I went from running a 10 mile, uh, a 10 minute mile to running a nine minute mile. Now I can do like six times. And, and, and the more time I have, the more I can do. Why? Because it's about pacing yourself. I set a goal and now it's just about pacing myself. It's just about getting comfortable with running. I'm not trying to do 10 miles. I'm not trying to do 7 miles. I'm not trying to do 11. I'm just trying to find where my pace is and once I find my pace and just set a goal for running, boom, everything else is coming. So before we get out of here, I just want to encourage you, all right, as we get ready for second quarter living, I need you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, yo, ET, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? What, what do I know? And, and, and what don't I know? And how much more do I need to know to get to where I am? What abilities do I have? What abilities don't I have? What skills don't I have? If I don't acquire those skills, it's going to allow me to be stuck where I am. What skills don't I have? What skills do I still need to get? What information do I have? What information don't I have? And what information do I need to get to get to where I'm trying to go. So baby, I'm dedicating this one to my underdogs, baby. Listen to me. It's about perspective. A champion is afraid of losing and everybody else is afraid of winning, baby. You heard what I said, the difference between a champion and everybody else. A champion is afraid of losing. Everybody else is afraid of winning. And so you say, E.T., what's your drive? What's your motivation? Listen to me. I'm not stupid enough. I'm not dumb enough to think that just because I am where I am today that I can't go back to where I was. My past ain't that far behind me, baby. Not only do I know where it is, I know how to get there. So every day when the sun come up like a lion, baby, every day when the sun come up like a gazelle, your boy get to running. Why? Because I'm afraid to go back to where I used to be. I'm afraid to go back to thinking the way I used to think, living the way I used to live, acting the way I used to live. I, I can't do it acting that way. And so I've given it up to go up. That's right. I gave it up to go up. So I just want to encourage you to all my underdogs, forget about what you don't have. Forget about your past. And remember, if you can believe it, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. So make the rest of your life the best of your life. I love you. I believe in you. And let's go get it. Get up, get out, and let's go get something. Baby!
Hey there, welcome to my channel, Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak the Persistence Underdog 2024. You hate the what you going through, it all right, keep your head up, you remember what told you last week. And champion and himself that the ground ain't and champion and just and just keep your head up all right you are going to get through this believe in your trust in your and i know you are thinking all right so i got their points before i hit you got to just tell man what a great feeling it was woke up monday morning i was in la i was auckland california got back man five hours west coast up monday i'm going to believe i said what an uab baby there was last team make and tournament all right found out called my boy and gang to gang something saying i dropped down and uh, because and where the talk about miracle territory 